Today I'm going to show you the most basic steps to open a few lipids, uh, some test strips of lipids that we have available for HIV, and then I'll show you a few advanced things that you can do with these. These are sort of ways to hack a few lipids into your system while we're working to improve the code to be able to create entire lipid bilayers for the whole molecule that can efficiently display. I'm working in Cinema 4D today and I'll just have to trust that you are going to be an advanced user if you're using one of the other systems that you'll be able to follow along with your own system, but the, the basic steps should be the same for any of the hosts. To begin, let's just open AutoPack and I'm going to set the mode to debug and let's open a new set of lipids and again I've only got a few test patches uh, posted right now so you should have if you restart your host Cinema 4D, 3D Studio Max, Maya, Blender, whatever you'll have this new option here click HIV and these are lipids for one the HIV model 1.3 and 1.4 uh, we'll try to get some posted for 1.2 and 1.0 later and click construct and as usual this is going to build your your standard viewer as well as an enormous amount of instance geometry that matches up to the HIV 1.3 model so I'm gonna leave that here and Actually, let's just see if we display the packing surface. No, that's irrelevant. I'll explain why later. And leaving the lipid palette open, I'm also now going to open one of the HIV models. And I know that this one best corresponds to 1.3 and 1.4 have the same shell. So click Construct. And this will build uh, both systems into the same space at the same time. So if you've moved your original HIV into some new uh, position in your scene, then you'll have to figure out how to grab the lipid set. Um, sorry, I, I think I'm off the screen here, so I'll scroll over here a little bit. Yeah, you'll have to know how to how to grab the parent object for your set, and of course you can um, you know drop that under in your in your viewer wherever your HIV is, and then zero out the coordinates, etc., to get the rotation and position to match. All right, with this we have the default shell that's displayed for HIV. I'm going to turn that off using the GUI is now we have the more high resolution structure. So that shell is showing you the limits of the hydrophobic region of the, of the lipids. And, whoops, I need to turn off the surface representation, okay. And just to show you what you might wanna do. So, unfortunately when I packed this, I didn't pack it around the, the models for HIV 1.2. I used the, the shell from HIV 1.3 and I packed it around the, the proteins for HIV 1.2. So if you opened your HIV 1.2 model, you'd see a spike protein sticking out in this region. Um, so the lipids are overlapping here. And again, I just ran a couple test strips and a little patch over here just to test the filling algorithm. and to try and get these lipids uh, with decent settings up to an appropriate density that matches the biological input data. Um, so we're still working on all that. So what you're going to have to do in the meantime is hack your way through this. Uh, so let's just see what we've got here. Uh, what I'm envisioning you could use this for, however, is you'd have your original shell and you'd show whatever you wanted to for HIV and then you might want to zoom in to just a little cross section and add um, you know, fade in some of the detail of the bilayer as you get closer with the camera or just do a nice cut to that scene directly. And so if you stay sort of this far away from the object, you, you can imagine that you can render it. Uh, I'm just going to turn on some ambient occlusion so you can see. Let's go to 
twenty, and then I'll crank this up to six hundred. Reduce our power to eight by thirty-two, just to speed it up. Um, you know, this is good enough detail to uh, not worry about the overlaps, but otherwise you can just go in and hand select them for now and delete the lipids that are overlapping. But uh, let's, if you really wanted to avoid overlaps, let's move in. Actually, first I want to show you how just to color these. So we've got these kind of ugly red default colors on them. And if I go into the hierarchy uh, for the lipids, and actually select one of the lipids, I know that its parent meshes are holding the color on them. So in, in Cinema 4D, um, I can select that, and then in the Material Manager, so you do the same with the, the Hyper Shader and Maya um, and the Object Manager in, in 3D Studio Max. I can find the color for the lipids, and I know that I played around with this earlier. If I set this color to be a gradient, for example, and I alter that gradient to 3D spherical, I want it to be centered, and I want the radius to be as long as the lipids are, approximately um, roughly 30. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like when we render so that the viewport isn't set for I'm going to turn off ambient occlusion so we can speed this up. Um, so we've got, what I'm trying to do here is color code the tails of the lipids different from the, from the heads. So the tails are hydrophobic and the heads are hydrophilic. And I just messed with these settings a little bit earlier and I know that the, the tails are approximately this long and the head is approximately this long. And just to I'll make it ugly for a second to, to show you some extremes. So this is a little bit more clear. Um, when we render, we've effectively quick and dirty uh, colored the, the heads and the tails differently. Um, so let's make those something a bit more attractive. I'll, I'll go with some darker tails and some lighter heads. And then I'm going to turn off specularity instead of taking time to adjust it. Okay. And if you really want to get in and, and get detailed, um, I, we have the same setup for the other host, but I'm not uh, an expert in the other host, so I don't know. So again, I didn't run the collision detection for uh, all of the proteins against this bilayer, but let's say you wanted to zoom in on this matrix protein, for example. So you really wanted to avoid these overlaps. And I'm going to take a second here to render that so you can see just how bad these collisions would appear if you had some, some nice ambient occlusion turned on. They're very apparent. Um, so let's use the collision detection built into the system to fix that. And again, um, I'm sorry, you have to figure out how to do this with the other hosts, but in Cinema 4D, uh, Let's select the object we don't want to collide with. I'm going to, just to quickly and dirty, bring it up to the top of the scene. I'm just going to uh, command exit and paste it so it's back at the top. And I'll use the setup that we have in HIV to fix, um, to set up the collision. So I'm going to move that in as a static object under HIV. In other words, I don't want it to budge when we do the collision detection. And let's turn everything off in HIV, except that guy. And we'll center him. And then I want to select just the, the lipids that are potential colliders. Uh, so I'll get selection tool here and get everybody in this general area. Oops, I, I selected the whole center object, so it'll be better if I select from over here. I had swiped over the center, which caused the entire uh, parent to be selected. All right, so now, same thing. I'm going to deselect 
our static collider. So I, I can see here I've only got these lipid instances selected. I hit uh, cut and paste, which brings them to the top of the hierarchy in C4D. Um, and I just drag them under moving here. And now I'm going to turn on the visibility of all those objects by forcing the parent to be visible in C4D. So now I'm just going to click this so you can zoom back in and have a nice center of rotation. Um, we have pre-set up these uh, bullet physics collision detection engines with these tags in Cinema 4D, and there should be corresponding objects in Blender and Maya, etc. And now when I click play, it's going to use that bullet engine to relax the system. So I've completely avoided any, any collision in those regions. And I'm going to, I didn't test this before, but I can tell it looks like it's using the the less expensive collision detection. I don't think these should move so far. I think we are using the convex hull, so I'm just going to reset that on the static object to collision uh, static mesh. And I'll reset and ah, it's, a, it's the same drama, so I guess the automated was, was picking that. I'll try one more thing, which is uh, under moving, I'm going to try and get it to spring back to the original position as much as possible. And again, I'm just trying to um, minimize the amount of reduction that's going on here. Let's go in. Alright, good enough. So these these little blue tails here are actually uh, hydrophobic uh, lipid-like structures, meristoles, that interdigitate into the hydrophobic regions of what's called the inner leaflet of the bilayer. So it's these little tails match up with these little tails, and we've done some collision avoidance to fix that. Again, we're going to have the actual algorithms that can do this very efficiently in AutoPack, and then once we get those fully functional, we'll allow you to generate them yourselves, or we'll have the full models that you can download. But as a hack to get you through the contest, you can do it this way for now. And let me know if it works or if it doesn't work. And uh, throughout the evening, I'll be trying to run some other models to try and get at least one full octant of the bilayer posted. And I'll try to also get uh, different regions of the bilayer for HIV 1.2 and then 1.0, uh, 1.3, and 1.4, probably in the order of priority 1.4, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, then 1.0. Hope this helps. Hope it's exciting. Um, there are 128 different lipid species in here, uh, not species, uh, just conformers of three different lipid types. And eventually we're going to have actually biologically relevant numbers coming from the human uh, lipid structures to, to fit that region. So keep stay posted and uh, we'll hope there's a spike protein in the way of that view. And we'll be getting more and more of these to you uh, well after the contest exists. So keep updating your software and keep coming back here for more tutorials. Thanks.